Good morning, everybody, or is it good afternoon? Good afternoon, people of God. So glad you're here. I've already been a part of two wonderful services, and now God's getting ready to do it all over again. I welcome you this morning to the Corpus Christi Christian Fellowship, where Jesus Christ is glorified, love is exemplified, and we endeavor to always teach the word of the Lord with excellence. I also want to welcome our internet uh, congregation, our friends that we have all over the world that tune in and pray with us and listen to the word of God. We welcome you, oh, what, every continent, every continent and many islands of the sea. Know that we're glad that you're tuning in. And uh, now we're going to open our service and we open by praising the Lord. And so we have this awesome opportunity to uh, join together and offer to the Lord the praise and glory that is due his name and even to take the very breath that he has put in our lungs and use it to bless his holy name. So let's just lift up the, na the Lord's name in, in, in worship and in praise. And I, I'm just grateful for all of our singers and musicians that uh, you make it easy for us because we just join in with what God is already doing on the stage. Amen. And when this and this get together, oh my, one accord, the word says that it's good and it's pleasant. And uh, the Lord begins to pour down. The more we praise him, the more he's going to pour down. Amen. So let's just do it. Shall we? Amen. Go for it. Bless you. Hallelujah. Oh God, we worship you this morning and we give you all the praise and glory and honor that's do your name. Hallelujah.
us on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be blessing, honor, glory, and power forever. Forever. Amen. Jesus, we glorify your name. We say that only you are worthy of our praise, oh God. For you've done what no one else could ever do. And Lord, we are grateful today. We're grateful. You woke us up this morning. We had the opportunity and the blessing to praise your name with the very breath that you yourself placed in our lungs. Lord, and we say thank you. And then you've told us that we could call on you and that you yourself would answer. You would answer. You've told us that if we've had, had any needs at all, that we could just cast them upon you because you care for us. You have anticipated our every need and then you've made provision to meet them all through one man and his name is Jesus the Christ. Amen. Lord, and we thank you. We thank you. Grateful, grateful hearts, Lord. You are the way maker, the promise keeper, the healer. Hallelujah. The light in the darkness. <laughs> Oh, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name today, Lord. Oh, we've worshiped. And, Lord, we're going to place these needs at your feet. And we're going to continue to worship. We're going to pray. And then we're going to watch and see what our God will do. Because he doeth all things well. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. Our brother Josh. It's needing prayer. Our brother Wilfredo is needing prayer. Both brothers are struggling with issues with their lungs. They've contracted uh, the COVID vi uh, virus. And Lord, we need you to touch their bodies. Lord, from the very top of their heads, even down to the soles of their feet. Lord, we're asking that you would command every cell, every fiber of their being to conform to your word and to be and to perform the function for which it was originally created. Lord, we're asking that you would just breathe into their lungs, the very breath of life, like you did at their birth, oh God. We know that you're able. We know that you're able. Lord, and we pray for Yolanda. Yolanda's kidneys are failing. Lord, we're asking that you would touch Yolanda touch Yolanda cause those kidneys to work like they're supposed to work in the name of Jesus Lord we ask that you would touch our sister her sister is requesting this for her sister Lord be with her speak to her amen you've had her in your hands all our life Lord God we asking that you would just touch our sister and then there's Michael Michael is down. Why so downcast? Oh, my soul, hope thou in God. Oh, and to hope in God is to wait on God. It's to expect him to show up. The word teaches us that those that trust in the Lord are never disappointed. Michael, we say, look to God. Michael, we say, trust God. Amen. Trust God. Just consider all he's done for you. Consider all he's done for you already, Michael. We say depression, go from him. And return no more. And return no more. We speak joy and abundance upon Michael Angelo. Right now. Right now. Cover him. Cover him. Joy of gladness. Come into the kingdom full, Michael where there's righteousness, joy, and peace, you'll find it there in Christ Jesus. And our sister uh, Irma Chavez, her husband has gone to glory ahead. And so she's grieving, but, but not as those that have no hope because she knows that for her husband, it's just been a transition. She's gone through one door. He's gone through one door and entered into another. Lord, I pray that you would help our sister Irma 
to look forward to that great reunion. Great reunion. Oh, God, you reveal, you reveal to me that uh, it's not over when it's over down here. It just continues <laughs> in a greater place. In a greater place. So, Lord, we just say thank you right now for who you are, for what you've done, Lord, and even what you're doing right now. We say thank you. Church, let's just say it like we mean it. Just consider all he's done for you. Oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, been good to anybody in here, when I just think about it, oh, I have to say something. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, amen. Our boast. Christ Jesus says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul in turn says, Most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me, to tent upon, to abide with me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The Apostle Paul learned from the experience of the thorn and his encounter with the Lord that if he should boast, it should not be in human accomplishments, but rather in his weaknesses. That revelation is the polar opposite to the way the world sees things. The attitude of the world is to despise weakness in every form. The world's refrain is, only the strong survive. However, Paul, through his affliction in his flesh, rejected this refrain and came to realize that Christ's strength rested upon him in the midst of infirmity. For it was when he was weak in himself that the power of Christ rested upon him in an abiding and strengthening presence. His conclusion is mind-boggling. As a result of embracing, even boasting in his infirmities, the power of Christ came to abide upon him. From this abiding presence of Jesus, he learned to take pleasure in the things that most of us skillfully avoid. Because of God's grace, he was able to say, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, feebleness of mind or body, frailties, sickness, weakness, reproaches, hurtful, injurious, and overbearing conduct, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, and anguish for Christ's sake. The apostle accepted all of these for Christ's sake. Many Christians, if not most, practice suffering avoidance rather than accepting these trials with joy for Christ's sake. But Paul embraced painful trials, although never seeking them. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Made perfect means that Christ's dependency is the perfect place for his strength to accomplish his goal. Often, believers are so impressed with Paul when they could have much of what he found, if not all of it. He makes plain his secret. Therefore, I believe the Lord through Paul and himself was giving us the pattern for living the overcomer's life. 
In Galatians 6, 14, he says, but God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Is it your boast that you have lost interest in the world system? Is it your boast that the world has been crucified to you and you to the world? Have you embraced this word that says, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake? Have you taken Paul's position in the midst of your trials saying, I want you to know that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel? Have your trials advanced the gospel? Have you allowed Christ's grace to be your sufficiency? From his experiences, Paul says, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. The apostle Peter joins Paul in this revelation saying, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. For Christ himself was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God. Let us take this revelation to heart and not be guilty of paying lip service to the scriptures, but let us embrace the Lord's revelation to Paul that Christ's strength would be made perfect in our weakness and that we would begin living as did Peter, Paul, and others, just as does Jesus by the power of God at rest after dawn. Wow, I was so caught up down there, I forgot I was supposed to come back. <laughs> have mercy, have mercy. I'm here to uh, recognize our first time guest. Bear with me, church. I'm trying to settle it down. Anybody here for the first time? This section? Okay. This section? Okay, repeaters, members, family, yay. Wow, there's a lot of you too. So glad to see everybody. So glad to see everybody. So let me see. Why don't we stand up and just love on each other, smile. Smile with those eyes behind that mask, all of that. Just let the love flow, hey. Just let the love flow, da da da. Amen. Thank you so much. We have a few announcements. If you would just turn your attention toward the screens, some good things. Hello, 
Fellowship family. Happy October, and may the Lord bless you. I'm Jennifer, and I'd like to share some announcements. Next Sunday, October the 10th, we will observe our 35th church anniversary. How amazing is that? We are so excited to take this opportunity to thank God for his faithfulness to us and establishing this great work. We want to acknowledge and celebrate what he has done for us over the past 35 years. In observance of our 35th anniversary, special services have been planned, and we want to inform you that on next Sunday, October the 10th, we will only have two services, one at 8.30 a.m. and the other at 11 a.m. Join us as we praise and give thanks to God together. Also, October is Pastor's Appreciation Month. What an amazing opportunity to give thanks and express our great appreciation to Pastor Don and Sister Marva. They are indeed a great gift to us all, and God has truly blessed us with pastors after his own heart. Please take this Pastor's Appreciation Month to express your sincere love to them. And on Sunday, October the 24th, a special love offering will be received on their behalf. We invite you to prayfully plan now and participate in this special gift. The food pantry will distribute food on Saturday, October the 9th, from noon to 1.30 p.m. Now, the food pantry serves families in need in the 78412, the 78413, and the 78414 zip code areas, along with our fellowship families. If you live in these areas, or you are in need, or you know someone in need, we invite you to come out Saturday, October the 9th. The fellowship will host a vaccination clinic against the COVID-19 virus on Saturday, October the 16th from 8 to 11 a.m. in the MWC classroom. Registration is not required. This is a service offered to you, our members, along with everyone in the community. Please share this information with your friends and your family. Calling all men of the fellowship. Our monthly men's meeting is Saturday, October the 16th. All men are invited to attend. Beginning at 8.30 a.m., come and enjoy a hearty breakfast and a wonderful fellowship. And at 9 a.m., anticipate and enjoy a great word. Make plans now to be there, and please invite someone. If you would like to be water baptized, please call the church office to sign up. We have taken precautions to ensure everyone's safety, so we will only baptize one individual or one family group at a time on Sundays during the 12.30 p.m. service. Thank you for your attention, and now we will continue with our worship service. May the Lord bless you richly and abundantly. Well, lots of... Good things are happening in this house, and uh, everything on the film was was pretty much correct, but there there has been a change. We still are going to have two services on the tenth, on the tenth, but it's not going. They're not going to be at eight thirty and eleven. It's going to be at eight thirty, ten thirty. Like we like today, and like from now on, eight thirty, ten thirty. Only going to be two services. Yes, Pastor. So he's saying that you could choose either one of those because there will only be two services next week. So the, you twelve o'clockers, you have to choose <laughs> eight thirty or ten thirty. Did I get it right, Pastor? He said I did, y'all. Anyway, uh, I got this message, and it, 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 it kind of got to me. It says, pray for Mrs. Ara Shelton. Now, uh, for those of you who do not know her, she is Brother Mark Shelton, who's usually on camera one half the time. Uh, it's his mom, and Mrs. Shelton is uh, in her 90s. And she and our friends, she and our friends, uh, I, I wish I could just show you her picture. She's beautiful, beautiful and so lively. And and uh, my understanding is that she's very sick, and that's where Mark is this morning. I had a really special visit with her. Well, we communicate. We don't do Facebook, but we do do phone and things like that. We communicate in cards and letters and things like that. But um, Mark invited us out to visit her when she was there, and we sat and we chatted. It's okay if I take about two more minutes, darling. Y'all help me. He said two. Uh, anyway, what happened was, um, I don't know how we got into this, but some kind of way, people that hang around me, we get into singing hymns. And she uh, sent to 
into her bedroom for someone to bring out a hymn book. But someone had typed up uh, a, a lot of hymns. There might have been about 50 or 60 of them. And she said she had taken piano lessons in some kind of way. The piano teacher got her this book. And she sent me one. So I have one in my home now. It's, not, it's, a, it's a soft copy because it was copied and bound. And she and I sat there and went page by page singing those hymns. Now, y'all know I'm a little Methodist girl, and hymn is way down up in me. Mm -hmm. we, we do hymns for a hymn. And we didn't just do one verse. I mean, our, we, we, it was a hymn showdown between me and Miss Ara. And I think she might have had two or three on me, but that was it, honey. Oh, yeah, don't wake me up now. Don't get me going. When I was a little girl, I just didn't get it. Some of those songs, why, Jesus? I, you know, because of where I was at the time, they were just words. But I tell you what, you keep on living, and all of a sudden those words mean a whole lot. And one of my least, one of my least favorite songs was I Come to the Garden Alone. Why would anybody want to be in a garden alone? But you know what? All I had to do was keep living. All I had to do was keep living. And every verse of that hymn started meaning just a whole lot to me. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. I've been there, I had to get up early and seek God. Life happened to me to where I was waiting for somebody to wake up so I could call them at five in the morning. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the son of God discloses. The voice I hear, and I, I don't understand people hearing God. The pastor helped me with that. He'll help you with it too. He said, maybe you just ought to ask him why you don't hear him. And I did. He said, because you do all the talking. <laughs> That's why. You say what you got to say, and you get up and you get out of there. And it was true. And when I learned to sit and wait before him, you don't rush God. He would taught us, you can't get in a hurry. There's a song like that. Don't worry, just don't get in a hurry. Okay, and the voice of him, the son of God, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. Verse two, he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet that the birds hush their singing. I don't know if they listening or I just don't hear them. You know what I'm saying? But the melody that he gave to me still in my heart is ringing. And so it's like you don't spend time with God. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you can't give him more time than he could ever give you. He'll always give you more time than you could ever give him. Yeah, I'm going to stop right there. Of course, I could go on to verse 3, but I'm not. He pointed at his watch, and y'all were supposed to help me. It's offering time, right? Don't be in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. Oh, glory. See that? I'm in a hurry. Getting too comfortable up here. Let me get, get on with it. <laughs> Three ways to give. Cash, check, or buy envelope. Uh, you put your cash in the envelope. You don't have to put your check in there, but I told them at both services, if you do, we, we will not be mad. Or you can give online, cccfellowship.com. That's our uh, address, even if you want to watch us at home. Sometimes you can't get out here at night or whatever. You can watch us online, slash give. And then for you techies, you get to text at 361-386-2565. Text the word uh, keywords for different giving options. So if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. The ushers are looking, and they will give you one. Yes. And just want to make sure I remember everything. Ah, uh, now, everybody got the envelope? Let's just bless the offering.
Thank you. Thank you so much for being so generous. I mean, you all are really generous, and because of your liberality, we're able to bless a lot of people all over the world. Yeah. You know, COVID is a pandemic. It's not just not Texas or the United States. If you watch television at all, masks, they're in them all over the globe, even the islands of the sea. Yeah, God is talking to everybody. He knows how to increase our levels of concerns. Why don't I bless the offering? Everybody got their, their envelope? Okay. Lord God, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for what you have done in our lives, Lord, and what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for meeting every need. We are a company of people that, that, <laughs> that you've never forsaken. In fact, you've, met every, you've given us everything that we have ever needed. You've given us everything we have ever needed. We know that all things come from you. So it's of your very own that we are giving back to you. And so we say thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay, now the next voice is going to be some music. Oh, the wonderful musicians are going to play. But the next voice you hear will be our own brother, Ben Mills. We love Ben. Ben is a big old strong guy. We like when he travels with us. <laughs> anyway, he's got the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. And I'm excited because God's been talking to us all day long, all day long. And we're just ready. Lord bless you, brother. We really appreciate you.
Amen. Thank you, Amy. That was awesome. They do good, don't they? All the musicians and the people singing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The worship that pours out of here is it's such a blessing. So thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank you, Pastor and Sister Marla. This is... Um, It's always an honor. It's always a privilege. It's something that I take serious, and I'm sure that everybody that stands up here takes it serious. I don't think I'm alone in that, but I take it serious, and I want you to know I do. I appreciate you. Um, it's been a while since I've been up here, though, and it, I don't remember exactly the last time I was up here, but it's been a while. Um, a lot's happened since then. It's not the pastor hasn't asked. I think it's more on me than anything. <laughs> than it, <laughs> the pastor has asked me, don't don't get that wrong. It's just that uh well I don't know if this is gonna work. It's brand new. Sorry guys. I I hope this is gonna work. If it does not, um you'll have to give me more grace than than uh anything, I think. There we go. We'll try that. All right, um like I said it's been a while since I've been up here. A lot's happened in that time. Um one of the biggest things that's happened I guess is I'm now a, a college student. Yeah, I started going to school. It, it's a hard thing. It's not undoable, but you got to remember, it was 21 years ago, last time I was in school. So I got to take all the basics. I got to go through the math and the English and all that. And the other day, I was joking with Shira about um, one of my professors, my English professor. I said, <laughs> she's, uh, she's making us watch these hippie vid- videos and read these hippie articles and all about stuff to save the planet by turning off your light switch. Not that I'm, not that I'm against that. Don't, don't get me wrong. What I, the problem is, is that she's pressing her hippie jargon on all these young, impressionable minds. <laughs> I told her, don't worry, babe. Don't worry. You're not in danger. My mind is not young nor impressionable, and I shall not be swayed. <laughs> so... It, it kind of backfired me on me, though. I mean, now she's walking around the house. Oh, you're not young or impressionable. <laughs> so it, it kind of backfired, but I thought it was funny at the time. <laughs> but uh, like I said before, it, it's a pleasure to be up here, and it's, a, it's an honor. But let's, let's get into it, right? So the, the title of my message is uh, Living Sacrifice. Living Sacrifice. Every believer wants to do what God requires. And we try with everything inside of us to do it. But we all fail miserably. Every single one of us fails miserably. We'll see someone in service raising their hands and praising the Lord, and we'll think, that person's got to figure it out. They got a great relationship with the Lord, and they probably do. But we'll think, that's what I got to do. I have to raise my hands in the middle of praise and worship to have what it is that God requires of me, to do what it is that pleases the Lord. Or we'll think, uh, we'll see someone serving in some capacity. I will think, that's it, right there, that's it. That's what I have to do. I got to do that thing to please the Lord. Or better yet, we'll ask ourselves, we'll ask a peer will say, what is it that God requires of me? What does he want me to do? Because we're too ashamed to go ask a mentor. We don't want to admit how much we've been miserably failing at this. So we'll ask a peer. And they'll tell us something, and we'll go try and do it, and then we'll fail again. Can I tell you that's part of the design? You see, my son learned how to walk by falling on his face. Not not literally. He didn't fall on his face, but he fell down. That's how he learned how to walk. It's the same with us. We have to fail. It's part of the design. So we all want to do those things that it is pleasing the Lord. But it's not those things that God is after. He's not after things. What God is after is is it will be a living sacrifice. That we live a surrendered life. 
Because the only thing that's going to please the Lord, the only thing that will please the Lord is a surrendered life. Yes, amen. Glory to him. When we live a surrendered life, we will see that, yes, we're going to do things. But the things don't come out of the desire to do them. The things come out of the relationship that we have with the Lord. It's not the desire that I want to do something. Because, yes, you do still want to do something for the Lord. But you only do those things that he tells you to do. That's that relationship I'm talking about. If I don't have a relationship, I can't hear what he wants me to do. And then do them. See, the, the, you're still doing things for the Lord, but the strength comes from within when you're doing them. When you're just trying to do something on your own strength, you're going to fail. See, this was not just my idea. I didn't come up with this. Paul brought it to us, right? In Romans chapter 12, he talks about this very thing. The, ver the first two verses... Here, if you've got your Bibles, if you want to turn there, or you've got your smart devices, you want to turn there, go ahead and do that now. So let me know when you're there. I think they might, uh, I see it back there, but they might put it on the screens for you. All right, we'll go ahead. It says, this is the New King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, in these first two verses, we see what it is that the Lord is requiring of us. Not only do we see what it is that the Lord is requiring of us, we see how to do it. And then we see what's going to happen when we do it, when we become that living sacrifice. Because it's only that surrendered life that's going to please the Lord. It's only being that living sacrifice that's going to please the Lord. No other way. So that's how we're going to proceed today. Is we'll, the first we'll talk about what it is that God wants us to do. And then we'll move on to how we do that. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Bear with me. I told you it was new, right? That's where the grace thing comes in. <laughs> so we'll see how we do it. And then once we see how we do it, then we'll see what happens when we do it. So moving forward, if I can get this thing to work right. Um, maybe. Hold on a second here. Hey, look at that. Did it. <laughs> Yay. You can all clap now. <laughs> all right. What God wants us to do. So the, the what is in the first verse. The first verse tells us what to do. We'll read it one more time. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Right there. I beseech you, therefore. So he's talking about something that, that he previously talked about. By the mercies of that, right? Paul is talking about, in the first 11 chapters of Romans, who God is. And he's talking about, that's the therefore. That's what he's talking about. I beseech you by that God and the mercies of him. What does he say? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You see, and I'm going to go through the quick like um, summary of what Romans was, first 11, verses, or first 11 chapters. It'll be quick. I don't want you to turn there. Just... Go with me. I'll give you the reference points um, and give you a quick summary of them. In Romans 3, verse 10, he tells us there's no one righteous. No, not one. And in verse 21 through 25, he tells us Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice that was required for the justification of all. Romans 5, 1, he also tells us God is not mad at you. That was huge. When I, when I read that and I realized when the Holy Spirit revealed the truth behind that to me, mind-blowing. He's not mad at us no more. We're at peace with our Maker. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done. Romans chapter 8, let's read the whole chapter. It's awesome. It, uh, we learn in there we're more than conquerors. More than conquerors. 
God is so good. In chapter 9, we learn that God is sovereign. 9, 15, and 16. And he shows mercy on who he wills to show mercy on. That's the mercies that he's talking about in this. He showed mercy on me. Showed mercy on all of you. He showed mercy on the whole world. All they have to do is accept him. And he sums it up in chapter 11. For him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. That's the God that Paul is talking about. That's the therefore. That's him saying, I just showed you God in the best way I know how. You know, Romans was the last book or the last letter that Paul wrote. So it's the, the culmination of a life dedicated, surrendered to the Lord. He says, because of what I just showed you and the mercies that are in God, I beseech you, I beg with you, I plead with you, I, I encourage you to present yourself a living sacrifice, a surrendered life, to say, yes, Lord. So what's a living sacrifice? To be a living sacrifice, you have to make a conscious choice. You have to decide that that's what I'm going to do. You have to say, yes, Lord, and then walk it out. Not just say, yes, Lord, and then sit back down. That, it doesn't work that way. That's like, that's like jumping up on the altar saying, here I am, Lord, a living sacrifice, and then jumping right off it before they light the fire. <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. You're not a living sacrifice then. You're not surrendered. It, uh, Jesus made a conscious choice. He said, well, Paul told us about it in Philippians 2, 8, and being found... In the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. We know that Jesus pleased the Lord. We know that that's what deep down inside of us we want to do. We want to be pleasing to the Lord. That's our example. That's it right there. And he challenges us. Jesus himself challenges us to do this. He says, take up your cross and follow me. Hinting at the fact that it, it's a choice and that you have to be a living sacrifice. You have to surrender your will to the will of another. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for being the way. See, God's not about just things. That's not what God's about. He doesn't want things from us. He's God. He created everything that there is. He created us. He doesn't need us, but somehow, mind-blowingly, he wants us. And then, not only does he want us, he gives us the ability to be able to be what he wants us to be. Through his son, Jesus. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Whenever I was talking earlier about going all in with Jesus, saying yes to him and doing it, walking it out, that don't always look like what you think it's going to look like. When I first said yes to Jesus and I first came back and said that I'm going to do everything you want me to do, Lord, I thought that he would go have me charging into battle for him, running in and doing exactly what it is that needed to be done at the moment. That's just me thinking on my personal strengths that I'm doing something for the Lord. See, failing miserably, right? It doesn't look like that. Going all in for Jesus looks like you pay a little bit at a time. It's a lifelong commitment. Each day is surrendered. You renew that commitment each day. You smile to your neighbors. You say, God bless you. It's a little at a time. There are those times, yes, I'm not saying that there's not. There's those times that it's a huge thing that it's a life or death situation and you say yes to the Lord and the Lord gives you the strength to walk it out. I'm not saying that there's not those. But I'm saying most of them are little bitty things. Talking with a brother or a sister at church, encouraging them in their everyday life or allowing them to encourage you. 
That's, that's huge. The body ministering to the body. So let's move on. Let's move on. How is it done? My time's running out already. How is it done? We find the how it's done, and we also find what happens when it's done all in verse 2. The first part of verse 2 is how it's done. He, Paul here compares two things, what we shouldn't do and what we should do. This is how it's done. He, that's to paint it. Paul was an artist. He painted stuff, right? He was a tent maker, but when he spoke, whatever he wrote to people, it was like an artist. He said, in the first portion of it, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's it, right there. That's how you do it. That's how you become a living sacrifice. That's how you lay your life down and surrender it to the Lord. What we shouldn't do is be conformed to this world, right? So what is that? What, are, what is being conformed to this world? 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 tells us, I'm not going to read the verse exactly because there's right in the middle of it, he put in a little caveat. So he says, For all that is in the world, skipping the part, is not of the Father, but of the world. So now that part that I skipped, what did it say? It said, The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's in the world. That's what we're not conforming to. It said, Do not be conformed to this world. That's it. Don't be conformed to the world. Easier said than done, right? I can't do it. And I got news for you, neither can either of you. It's not possible. But through Jesus Christ, thank the Lord that it is possible. Not by my strength, because remember, I fell miserably. But through the one that's inside of me, the strength that wells up inside of me, the one that stands strong when I'm there falling on my knees, through that man, through that Jesus, it's possible to not be conformed to the world. It's possible to not be conformed. That's the, what we don't do, right? So what do we do? We renew our mind. It says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul in Philippians 4, chapter 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. What's he telling us there? He's talking to us about renewing our mind. Surrounding ourselves with the things of the Lord. That's that list right there. That's the things of the Lord. That's not things of me. That's not things of the world. That's all things of the Lord. Surrounding yourself with that and meditating on it. Spending quality time with the Lord. Developing your relationship with the Lord. Getting alone and hanging out. You know, if I never hung out with my wife, I wouldn't have a relationship with her. I just wouldn't be. And if, I, if all I did was wave at her, every now and then, or, or send her a letter, or talk to you about her, I wouldn't be in a relationship with her. It just It's not possible. It's the same thing with the Lord. Only difference is it's a perfect relationship. He supplies everything. That's the difference. That's a picture. A husband and wife are meant to be a picture of the body as a bride and Jesus as the husband. That's the picture they're supposed to paint. Pictures are not perfect. But the relationship with the Lord can be and is perfect. Because it relies on not me. It doesn't rely on you. It doesn't rely on you. It doesn't rely on any of us. Thankfully, it relies on Jesus and his sacrifice, the price that he's already paid. That's the source. That's the strength. That's how you build the relationship. That's the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, hallelujah. Praise him. He is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. But like I said, you cannot renew your mind on your own. It's not possible. Because my strength, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, that he was telling me this truth. I didn't know it at the time, but he was telling me this truth. He said, son, if you took a coffee cup and you held it up, you might be able to do it for hours, but eventually your arm's going to drop. Eventually it's just going to 
your, your body's going to give out. You could be the strongest man in the world. That's what he'd say. If you were the strongest man in the world and you were holding this coffee cup up ounces, it's going to fail. Your arm's going to eventually drop. But if God says that cup stay in, that cup stay in. If that cup, God said stay, it stays. That's what I mean by you can't renew your mind on your own. We have a small part to play in that. I'm not saying we don't. The part that God gave us to play. Because God, God, uh, God told me through someone here that we have a part to play. And God refuses to do that. He won't do it for us. God has a part to play too that we can't do. It's just not possible. But if we do our part, he will do his part. Because he is always faithful. So what does this look like renewing your mind? It's your quiet time. It's your time spent alone with the Lord. It's developing that relationship. It's meditating on those things that we read in Philippians 4. Surrounding yourself with the things of the Lord, the people of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. And somehow, God is all-powerful. I'm not taking that away from him. But somehow you're strengthened. Somehow the spirit within is strengthened. I don't know how it works. It just works. It, I can't articulate the, the fact there, but I know the experience. Just like you know the experience. You've, you've all felt it. When you get around the body, you feel good. That's it right there. That's what I'm talking about. You feel good. It's the strength of the Holy Spirit within you. Because it's only that, through that surrendered life that you're going to be able to please the Lord. Amen. Only through being a living sacrifice will you be able to, to do the things that God wants you to do. There's no other way, because that's how God has what he needs to be able to work inside of you and work through you. That's the only way. So what will happen when we do this, when we renew our mind like he's telling us to? He tells us in the second part of verse 2. He says that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That you're going to prove this. By everything that we just talked about, you're going to prove this. You're going to become a living sacrifice by renewing your mind daily, and you're going to prove that God's will is good. God's will is acceptable, and God's will is perfect. What does that look like? It's your experiences. It's walking, sometimes crawling, sometimes being drugged by the Lord. It's your experiences that prove this, that he works all things together for the good of those that are in him. That's what this is. Some of the things that you go through in life, they're good. And some of the things are bad, right? I know personally, I wouldn't choose anything bad for myself. I don't know about you. Maybe that's just me. I wouldn't choose anything bad. But I've learned through walking through bad times with the Lord that his will is perfect. There's heartbreak in it, yes, but it's perfect. It develops inside of you the character the nature of Christ himself. Those hard times are the strength that you have for later on. When your brother's going through the same thing, you can say, God got me through it, so he's going to get you through it. That's the source of the, the strength in the body. That's the source of it. Jesus pulled you through it or helped you walk through a situation, whether it be a, the passing of a loved one, the loss of a job, a physical ailment. All things that I wouldn't choose for myself. And I'm sure you wouldn't choose for yourself either. But when we walk through those hand in hand with the Lord, something happens. Amen. We know then that it's acceptable to me. Come what may. Come what may, Lord. I'm all in for the Lord. Are you all in for the Lord? I will walk with the Lord no matter what. Because I know, not just that I've heard, not just that I've seen, I know that God's will is good. 
I know that God's will is perfect. But I know it's acceptable. I know that when I can't depend on myself, God is always dependable. I know that for a fact. So as we close, I'm just about out of time. I want you to remember just one thing, really. We talked about only two verses, but I really only want you to remember one thing. Only a surrendered life can please the Lord. Only a surrendered life. I'm not going to restate the whole thing because I believe you were listening. But through that surrendered life, God can work both in you and through you. He can get what he wants. A body in whom he can be himself. Watchman Nee once said, God's will doesn't always look good. Or good is not always God's will. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Good is not always God's will. But God's will is always good. Jesus said, I always do those things that please the Lord. Indicating that he was surrendered totally to the will of the Father. Not his will, but he was indicating that he was a living sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the strength to do this. Thank you, Lord. I'm blown away. I'm blown away by the goodness of the Lord, by his mercies. And I pray that you are as well. Shall we pray? Jesus, thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that it is that you've done for us and through us. I ask that you would continue to walk hand in hand with us and strengthen us to always say yes to your will. I pray that you would help us to do this. My Father, we only want you. Give us more and give us the strength to handle it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much, Brother Ben. Thank you. Really, let's give another hand. Now, now right before we, we, we receive the communion, just right before, let me ask a question. Is there anyone here who wants to give his or her life to Jesus? You say, well, I've heard the word, and I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Is there anybody? Just raise your hand and I'll see you. If there's somebody, I see a hand. Is it, do I see another hand? Anybody says, I want to do this today. Anybody here? I want to give my heart to Jesus. Wow. I, I think this is a, is a great thing. And uh, would you mind coming here for a moment? And I just want to touch you and bless you. Is there anyone who would like to just renew your faith, rededicate yourself? If there's anybody like that, I want you to come, and we're just going to rededicate yourself. Anybody who would like that. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else who would like to just rededicate? I want to rededicate yourself to Jesus. I mean, this is important. And uh, don't feel forced. Just come if you would like. Rededicating yourself to Jesus. Come stand. Stand. This man. Super. Super, I'll come up on the platform and we'll just rededicate ourselves.
to the Lord Jesus. And what we're doing is we're rededicating ourselves to his will, his way, as our brother just shared. His purposes. We want to rededicate. When I was a young guy, I told the other services, when I was a young person, I was always doing that. I mean, I just wanted to do And even right now, I, it's, it's a constant, as it were, habit of mine to always rededicate myself. In the, in the night, I will say, Lord, I want to be better. I want to be better. Make me better, Jesus, than I was yesterday. Make me better than I was this morning. But I said, I want to please you in everything. Jesus pleased the Father in everything. Now, I don't know how that does, what that does to you or how it makes you, you feel. But I, I was reading that many years ago, and I read, Jesus says, I always do those things that please the Father please God. I always do those things that please Him, He said. And I thought, always? You see, for me, it was sometimes. And I didn't want that. Not always. And the Lord, as our brother shared with us, the Lord will ask you to do even impossible things. He will ask of you things you cannot do. Usually, that's what it is. Something you cannot do so that you'll need him. So don't, don't, don't ever feel embarrassed to rededicate. I did, did some of that early this morning before that, rededicating. I did it the day before and, the, and the, week, the days before and the week before and the month before. And one thing it does for you, it strengthens you. It will strengthen you. It will fortify you. So we're going to pray. But I, when our sister raised her hand, I said, I know she knows Jesus. And she says, I want more. I don't want just that. That's what she was saying there. I want more. I want to be strong in the Lord. You see, we are an epistle written and read by all men. How does that go? Read by all men. So we are read by our neighbors, by the people on Facebook who know us. And some of us are not a real good picture of Christ. So let's get this done, all right? We're going to bless the Lord. <clears throat> let's let's just, just, just receive this prayer of dedication, of rededication. Father, in the name of the Lord, these are your people. They, they are your sheep. They don't hear another voice. They hear your voice. It's your voice. They don't follow another shepherd. They don't follow false shepherds. They don't have investments in the world system that they follow the voice of the world. They are yielded to you and they're asking to be even more yielded, to be more sensitive. My God, I'm asking today as they stand here, that they will become even more sensitive to your word. And the old things that are in their, in their cell memory, their, their DNA, I pray that they would reject it in the name of Jesus. And another voice they will not follow. I pray that they would not even follow the old person that they were. For Paul teaches us through the Holy Spirit that all of us were at one time darkness. We we're in the darkness? He says, no, we were darkness. But now, we are light in the Lord. So, Lord, I thank you for the light that I see and that we will not be led by our emotions as was taught us today. We will not be led by our emotions and natural inclinations, even our old hurts, our old perspectives, but today, we rededicate ourselves to your will and your way. We, we lay all things aside of the world, even the things that we thought were good. And sometimes we think, oh, that's a good thing in the world. There's nothing in the world system that's good. Nothing in that system that's good. But you are good. And you have good people who are walking up and down on this earth. And I pray, Lord, that these would be those that in this dark, 
dark hour, that they would shine like stars in the firmament. I pray this in the name of the Lord as they rededicate themselves. Now, Lord, let them see a difference. Let them see a difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and listen, every time, if the Holy Spirit moves on you to pray that, you pray it. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Make me better. Make me better. Cause me to walk in the truth of God. Do it. And, and when you get my age, you'll, you'll be better than I am at my age. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a promise from God. He said to me uh, one day, we were, in, we were in the oil field, and we were talking. Uh, actually, Brother Stan and I, we were talking. I was over at his trailer again, and we were talking, and the Lord said to us that those who come after you are going to learn quicker, and they're going to, as it were, I'm paraphrasing it now. It's not right, crystal right this second. But they would, you would come to the knowledge that we had come to at a much faster pace, and you were going to be better and stronger because you would have the words that we were speaking and you would have our lives as an example. So that's a good thing, isn't it? So go out and be strong in the Lord and walk it out in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Now we're going to have uh, our communion. We're going to serve communion. And uh, in a short while, and Brother Elliot is going to come.
that the word has blessed you today. The worship has blessed you today. I'm, I'm reminded of the song that we sang earlier. This is be blessings and honor and glory and power forever. What the Lord does is forever, church. And he's invited us to commune with him and one another forever. And so our job is to take his fame to the highways, to the byways, to let the world know that the Lord is offering forever blessings. The scripture in 1 Corinthians, the 10th, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 and 17, it says, The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. So the Lord has called us all to be partakers of his body, which is represented by this bread. It's one bread. So we all have common union because of one bread. Amen? So let us partake of this bread representing the body of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this juice is representing the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for many that was shed for you and me his blood and so we partake of it knowing that we're partaking of the blood that was shed for us and now we have communion with the Lord this is the cup of blessing forever let us enjoy let us partake as we fellowship one with another amen Wow, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, dear Lord. We thank you, Father, for this communion, dear Lord, for this supper, Lord, that you have prepared, prepared for us that we might understand our commonality, our common union. Thank you, Lord, as we partake Father, we bless you, Lord, and we bless one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Enjoy yourselves today, church. Amen.
The Lord serves a good meal. Amen. Amen. All day. All, that's right. All day since March. It's been good all day. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. So, church, you know, we're going to go out. As we, and uh, as we uh, go out, we're going to, uh, before we go out, we're going to bless one another. Amen. Amen. So, everybody raise their hands and, and make a 360. And look at your, bra your brother and your sister. And say, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh! 